Hi everyone, I'm Lokesh. Today I'll be presenting about Ozone. Ozone is an object store. It is a top level project in Apache. And uh, today we'll be discussing some of the design principles which help achieve, which help Ozone achieve a scale of abilities. A little background about myself. I'm a software engineer in Cloudera. I have been contributing to Apache Ozone, Apache Rattus, and Apache Hadoop for about four years now. And currently, I hold PMC and Committer privileges for these projects. So uh, let's look at some, of, some introduction about Ozone. It's a distributed object store. The namespace consists of volumes. Every volume would have multiple buckets. Every bucket would have multiple keys. So Ozone provides accessibility via the Object Store API, File System API, as well as S3 API. It started off as a sub-project in Hadoop, but currently it is a top-level project in Apache. So let's dive a bit deeper into the architecture. Most of the big data applications today, like MapReduce, Hive, Spark, Impala, all of them use uh, access storage via Hadoop compatible file system API. So this API is part of Hadoop project and uh, Hadoop community has been uh, very fundamental in uh, making sure that this API is highly adopted and highly scalable. So HDFS is the default uh, implementation of this API in Hadoop project and it's a distributed file system. So the HDFS has been highly, uh, is highly used in multiple companies today. Um, so most of the cloud providers today, like Amazon AWS, Google Cloud Storage, uh, Azure Data Lake Storage, they provide their own implementation of this API. Similarly, Ceph also provides its own character for this API. So Ozone also provides its own implementation and uh, big data applications can access Ozone using Ozone file system. The non-big data applications can access Ozone using the S3 API. Ozone has been designed to coexist with SDFS um, in a cluster. So what that means is the Ozone data nodes um, can coexist with SDFS data nodes and they can access the same physical uh, storage with the SDFS data nodes. Both of these systems can coexist uh, in and operate in an isolated manner in a cluster. So let's dive a bit deeper into the SDFS architecture, and then we'll see some of the improvements uh, which Ozone does, and that helps Ozone to achieve the scale of 10 billion keys. So HDFS, uh, the namespace is entirely kept in RAM. And uh, the namespace consists of a namespace map as well as a block map. The namespace map uh, maps a file to a list of blocks. The blocks in total comp comprise the file. The block map maps a block to a set of data nodes which hold the replica for that block. So this entire namespace is uh, kept in memory for uh, HDFS name node. And if you look at the resource utilization, it is of the order of number of files and number of blocks in the HDFS cluster. The data layer of HDFS comprises of data nodes. A data node would have multiple disks. Every disk can be seen as a collection of blocks. The blocks uh, hold the data for the files which SDFS cluster has. So periodically data nodes would send block reports, um, that is a list of blocks which the data node contains and name node would process these block reports. And in case it finds some missing blocks or if a disk has failed or a data node has failed, it will schedule replications for the missing blocks in the cluster.
So now let's look at how ozone improves upon this architecture. In ozone, um, there is a concept of containers. A container by default is 5 GB in size and it's an aggregation of blocks. So now HDFS, um, the data, in Ozone, the data nodes are now sending container reports rather than block reports. This is a factor of 100x reduction in size of these reports. And the metadata service would receive this, uh, these container reports and make sure that the containers are sufficiently replicated. In case, like HDFS, um, in case it finds some missing containers or on in case of failure of data node or disk, it will schedule replications for these containers. Um, so such that a minimum uh, replication factor for these containers is maintained in the cluster at all times. So one other important aspect of Ozone is the metadata has been separated into two separate services. Ozone Manager is the namespace manager in Ozone and Storage Container Manager is the container space manager. So data nodes are sending container reports to storage container manager, which in turn processes these container reports as uh, discussed. So SCM would also maintain a container map, which is a mapping of uh, container ID to set of data nodes, um, which contain the container replica. If we look at the size of container map, it is of the order of containers rather than blocks. So that is significant reduction in memory usage for storage container manager. And Ozone Manager, the namespace, uh, it only keeps a working set in RAM. So this is also another significant reduction in memory usage for Ozone Manager. This, the working set is configurable and like name node, it also maintains a mapping from a file or object to set of uh, block locations or blocks which comprise that file. A block ID uh, would be a combination of container ID and local ID. Container ID is a global ID and it is, uh, it is assigned by SCM. Local ID is a local to the container uh, where that block is present. So, there is a very clean separation of uh, container space or the data layer um, from the uh, namespace. And that, that helps a lot in easier management of uh, an Ozone cluster. Further, Ozone also has a recon server. So this is a kind of reconciliation service. Um, it is similar to what FSCK does in HDFS and admin can access the recon server to understand the missing replicas um, in ozone cluster and to know if there are some files which are corrupted so if you're talking about the scale uh, hdfs has been known to achieve a scale of 300 to 400 million files and beyond that um, the memory part of name node can uh, it, it's very difficult for name node to maintain the further namespace in memory. And name node, name node sees a lot of GC pressure uh, beyond 400 million files. Whereas Ozone has been tested with around 10 billion objects. Uh, so Ozone carries forward the best of HDFS. Um, there is horizontal scalability of petabytes and IO. HDFS cluster can manage uh, thousands of nodes. Similarly, Ozone can also manage thousands of nodes. With every addition of data node, there is addition uh, to the number of petabytes uh, or the cluster capacity and IO bandwidth uh, due to the bandwidth addition of uh, the disk in the data nodes. Then Ozone has a fault-tolerant storage layer. At all times, uh, Ozone makes sure that the container replicas are sufficiently, containers are sufficiently replicated and in case um, there is in case of data node failure there is an early detection and the metadata service and ozone uh, would make sure that these replicates are uh, containers are 
uh, replicated uh, with minimum replication factor. So storage and compute can scale independently in, in Ozone like HDFS. And if admin wants, uh, they can use the same physical nodes for storage and compute. Further, Ozone uses the strong uh, Hadoop security model in Ozone. And Ozone also provides support for rolling upgrades, um, ACLs with Ranger pluggability. Directories and cross directory renames are work in progress. Um, these will soon be merged in Ozone and will be available in the next Ozone release. So there are uh, significant improvements over SDFS um, in Ozone. And the, so the most obvious one is scalability. Um, ozone has been designed to store 1 trillion objects. So it can do that uh, while some optimizations. Um, there are some optimizations which can be done for small files. Currently, Ozone can, has been tested with 10, 10 billion objects. Further, the data node uh, capacity which SDFS can support is around 100 TB. Beyond that, the block reports can become uh, quite cumbersome for data uh, name node to handle. So name node is receiving block reports from thousands of nodes, and it has to process these uh, block reports. And given the scale of uh, the, or the, the block reports, uh, it can become quite uh, resource intensive for name node to handle them beyond 100 TB capacity. Further, Ozone improves a lot in terms of manageability. It only has a working set uh, in heap, and that is not uh, equal to number of files or a number of blocks in the cluster. So that sort of significantly reduces the uh, heap size required for Ozone processes. There is faster startup compared to HDFS. In HDFS, uh, it has, the name node has to load the entire namespace in memory um, before it can start accepting request. This can lead to considerable amount of time required for startup. Whereas in Ozone, um, it, since it is only holding a working set in RAM, the faster is much quicker. It can, further Ozone can support N plus K failover of master mm -hmm. and masters can and data nodes can be co-located if needed. As discussed earlier, Ozone provides accessibility using S3 API, um, but it also provides strong consistency guarantees. So that is uh, uh, the strong consistency guarantees uh, come from the raft replication. So Ozone uses uh, raft replication for uh, replicating its metadata. Further, it, Ozone matches SDFS in terms of performance. SDFS is, is a gold standard in terms of distributed file systems, and Ozone can match SDFS performance uh, today. So some of the core design principles uh, on which Ozone is based, it provides strong consistency guarantees. So the metadata in Ozone is replicated using Raft protocol. And so Raft protocol uh, provides these strong consistency guarantees. Sim it uses a simple architecture. Um, HDFS uses a central master architecture. And with the central master architecture, it, has, it can scale to, um, or it can, service around 100 key clients uh, the HDFS, uh, using the HDFS name node. Similarly, Ozone has a central metadata service, and it can also service uh, 100 key clients uh, using the Ozone manager. Further, Ozone also keeps in mind operational ease. It is very easy to add or remove nodes, uh, data nodes from an Ozone cluster. It uses proven building blocks like Graph, RocksDB, Hadoop Security. These technologies have been heavily tested by the community and they are used in multiple projects uh, around the world. Ozone is 100% open source and has been part of Apache Hadoop since day one. Today, it is a top level project in Apache. 
So let's go through the write and read key workflow in Ozone. For writing a key, a client would make a create key call to Ozone Manager. Ozone Manager then contacts SCM to allocate a block. A block um, is associated with a particular container in Ozone. And a container is associated uh, with a set of data nodes where that container replicas would be present. So these set of data nodes are received by the client and client can then write data to these uh, data nodes. So data writes are done via the raft uh, protocol. Ozone uses Rattus libraries for writing data to data nodes. So Rattus is a Java implementation of raft consensus protocol. And Rattus makes sure that the data is uh, sufficiently replicated. And that is, it makes sure that the data is written to all the data nodes. And once client uh, gets an acknowledgement from the Rattus library uh, that the data is replicated, it can issue a commit key operation to Ozone Manager. For read key, client would make a get key call to Ozone Manager. And Ozone Manager returns a list of key location infos to the client. The key location in course is a list of blocks uh, which comprise the key. The, the block is corresponding to a container and every container as we discussed ha is present in a, in a set of data nodes in Ozone. So for reading a block, client would issue a call, a read request to the set of data nodes uh, which contain that block and it can re read the block from any data node containing the block. 